it's always a pleasure to talk about meta-analysis. I think the value of meta-analysis is clear because this is what we use to develop treatment, treatment guidelines. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this, uh, there is no better way of uh, filling treatment guidelines as using meta-analysis. So what I want to do today, I want to briefly talk about the database of studies on psychotherapies for uh, adult depression we have built in the past few years. And we have a lot, lots of results uh, from this. But I want to focus today on the comparative studies between psychotherapy and pharmacotherapy, because I thought on a psy psychiatry conference this would be the most interesting. Uh, if I would have known uh, this would have been on the Kirsch study, uh, that, that uh, the initial severity uh, is an important issue. I could have uh, talked about that too, but maybe I can say a few words about that in between. Because basically, we have the same problem in, problem in psychotherapy research. So if you look at the effects of psychotherapy for adult depression, you also see that the effects are larger when baseline severity is uh, higher and uh, the effects are lower when, when the uh, problems are less severe. But may, maybe I can come back uh, to that later. Well, what we do, I won't bore you with all the statistical details, but what we, what we do since 2007 is that we each year search the literature systematically to add studies on psychotherapies for adult depression. We've written a few methodological papers about how we did this. And we published, uh, I think, more than 40 uh, meta-analysis now about this database. We're now updating it for the year 2014, but we haven't finished that yet, so I won't uh, present that yet. Uh, I've, so we excluded uh, studies on adolescence and on maintenance studies. Um, and I don't think I have to explain what effect sizes are, but I just indicate the difference between two groups in terms of standard deviations. But because that is difficult to explain, we also try to translate that into numbers needed to be treated, which is easier to understand. Um, an important thing is, well, what, for example, in the Kirsch study has been done, and in the Fournier uh, JAMA paper in 2009, where they look at the association between the effects uh, between pharmacotherapy and baseline severity, they say, well, we use 0.5 as the cutoff for clinical relevance. But that cutoff is not based on any uh, empirical data. It's just, uh, it's, there's no reason to assume that 0.5 is a good cutoff. So what we just published a few weeks ago in depression and anxiety, an alternative method to decide what um, a clinical relevance is, and that is based on the minimal important difference, which is used a lot in uh, quality of life research. And if you translate that minimal important difference to uh, a threshold for clinical relevance and depression, a very rough estimate uh, comes out at about, about 0.24, which is much lower than the 0.5 of uh, uh, Kirsch. Well, we, we, what we try to do in these meta-analyses is if we have a subject, we try to uh, include uh, major international researchers in these areas. Uh, to be certain that we cover all the relevant aspects of these, uh, of these analysis. So, until now we have 352 studies included, and they include anything, psychotherapy versus control group, uh, psychotherapy versus pharmacotherapy versus combined treatments, group versus individual treatments, internet-based versus face-to-face -face treatments, uh, inpatient, studies on inpatients, uh, so we got lots of studies on anything, and well, we we published uh, uh, a lot of meta analysis about this on all kinds of aspects, on all the different psychotherapies there are, there are all the different target groups that are that have been examined. Um, so we have also done a few meta analysis on 
the association between baseline severity and outcome in uh, uh, psychotherapy for depression. Um, we have looked at characteristics of the therapies, the treatment format, the number of sessions, the intensity. We've looked at quality of life. At we, we just, we're just now working, for example, on a meta-analysis in which we look at the effects of psychotherapy for depressed mothers on the, on the outcomes on children. So um, on publication bias, which we also have uh, quite a lot in psychotherapy research. Uh, so, but what I want to do, oh yeah, briefly here, this is what, what, what you, if you look at the research over time, what you see is that the number of studies uh, increase quite a lot. Uh, and that's, uh, I, there is no reason to assume that that, that that line will flatten down. So I think the number of studies in psychotherapy for depression, uh, it's, it's a big, big thing and it's uh, growing every year. What, what we saw in the 1970s and 80s, most of the research was done in the United States. But now, um, more research is done in Europe than in the United States. And what we also see is that it's now done in all kinds of other countries, not only Australia and Canada, but also in uh, low and middle income countries. So what I want to focus on today, because I, I cannot uh, cover all the things we have examined in our data, in our, uh, with our database, I want to focus on uh, the studies comparing psychotherapy with pharmacotherapy and the combined uh, treatments. So the first meta-analysis we published about this uh, in 2008 in the Journal of Clinical Psychiatry, there we, we compared 37 randomized trials in which psychotherapy and pharmacotherapy were directly compared with each other. One major problem of these studies is, of course, that they're not blinded, and there's no solution for that, so you, we have to be careful uh, with interpreting uh, this. But uh, what we did find was a trend indicating that pharmacotherapy may be more effective than psychotherapy. The effect size, however, was very small, 0.07, which is clearly below the threshold of clinical relevance. Uh, and this difference was mainly driven by a few studies on uh, dysthymia. And in one of our meta-analyses, we showed that psychotherapy is less effective than pharmacotherapy in uh, a chronic depression and dysthymia. And, um, uh, this is probably what we find here also, that the, so because we looked uh, at it in more detail, and we, uh, what we also found is, was that the dropout rate in studies on psychotherapy, that the, on, I mean the dropout rate for psychotherapy was lower than the dropout rate for pharmacotherapy. And if you adjust for that through intention to treat analysis, then the difference between psychotherapy and pharmacotherapy disappeared. So this indicated that psychotherapy and pharmacotherapy are probably equally effective. It may be important to say that what we're doing now, as, I, as we talked about the limitations of uh, meta-analysis uh, in, the, in the earlier session, I think the solution, one of the solutions is to just uh, uh, collect the primary data of studies, and we're doing that now for several of our subsets of uh, uh, of our database. And one of the one of the data sets we're collecting the primary data of is on CBT versus pharmacotherapy. And we have now, I think, the data from 13 uh, trials, primary data of 13 trials. And so we can look at baseline severity, and we can look at dropout rates. And what we found in this meta-analysis on the dropout rate, that it is lower in psychotherapy, we do not find that in our individual patient data meta-analysis. So we have to be careful with this finding. Uh, what we, what we found in this meta-analysis was a small difference in favor of SSRIs compared with uh, uh, psychotherapy. And that was larger than the difference uh, with TCAs. But again, if we adjusted for dropout rate, this difference was non-significant anymore, suggesting that psychotherapy and pharmacotherapy are as effective uh, uh, at the short term. 
We did recently publish an update of this in which we did not only look at uh, uh, depression but also at anxiety disorders. So all studies directly comparing psychotherapy with pharmacotherapy in mood and anxiety disorders. So we could include 67 trials uh, there. And again, we found that psychotherapy is less effective in dysthymia. That was quite clear. That, is, that may be uh, caused by the fact that there's only a few studies on dysthymia. So it's difficult to interpret whether that's a true uh, finding or that these are just chance findings, we don't know. But it's clear from this meta-analysis also that uh, psychotherapy is less effective in dysthymia. But we also found, for example, that psychotherapy is more effective than pharmacotherapy in OCD, and that counseling in general is less effective than pharmacotherapies, and that TCAs are also less effective than psychotherapies. And all these things remain significant if you adjust for all the characteristics of the studies, except for the finding of dysthymia. But that's again, that may be again uh, an issue of power because the number of studies was very small. So this, I, I think this suggests that all psychotherapies are equally effective. Um, in the previous presentation, uh, there was, uh, uh, there was the uh, Cipriani, uh, meta-analysis suggesting that some uh, pharmacotherapies are more effective than others. But there are other, uh, but if you look at the Cipriani meta-analysis, the differences are at least very small. And that kind of small differences we also see between psychotherapies, but they're not stable. Um, and if you look at other meta-analysis on the pharmacotherapies, in which they have, they, have, they have used broader outcome criteria, then again, the differences are not significant anymore. So I think either all psychotherapies and pharmacotherapies are equally, equally effective, or they are about equally effective, with only very small difference between them. Uh, so what I think what we should do in the research field is do more research on what works for whom. And that's one of the main reasons we are now collecting all the primary data of these, so that we can look in the individual patient data in large sample sizes, which moderators of outcome uh, we can find. Uh, so these, these are summaries of what we found, what, we, what you find if you compare pharmacotherapy, psychotherapy, and combined treatment to pill placebo. There are not so many studies comparing psychotherapy with uh, pill placebo. Uh, we, I think we, had, we have about 13 in our database, but they are the best if you want to compare the effects of pharmacotherapy and psychotherapy. You have to have one comparator. So here you see the effects of uh, all these three um, uh, types, classes of uh, treatments for adult depression compared with pill placebo. Uh, what you do see here is that combined treatment is considerably more effective than either pharmacotherapy and psychotherapy alone. So if you say, are all uh, treatments pharmacological or psychological treatments equally effective? Well, yes, if you use them individually. But if you combine them, it's very clear that combined treatment is much better than either psychotherapy alone or pharmacotherapy alone. And because um, we have indications that the baseline severity is related to the effect size, and that's true for pharmacotherapy, but it's also true for psychotherapy. Then I would such, then I think, and I, I just there I, there is one JAMA psychiatry viewpoint paper which will come out uh, this year, written by me. That I think in in the less severe cases, combined treatment should be a real option because even neither psychotherapy nor pharmacotherapy is very effective in mild to moderate depression. But if you combine them, the effects are much higher. So, this is what you find if you uh, look at the different uh, types of comparisons you can make. 
So I talked about psychotherapy versus pharmacotherapy, which have also all kinds of studies comparing psychotherapy with combined treatments, pharmacotherapy versus combined treatments. And what you see is that the additional value of combined treatments of over one of the uh, psychotherapy or pharmacotherapy only is about third, an effect, with an, is an effect size of 0.30 or 35. There is also one group of studies in which combined treatments is compared with psychotherapy plus placebo, and these studies indicate the exact contribution of the active medication to combined treatment. And as you can see, the effects are not that big. If we, if we would have a comparable design for the, for the uh, exact contribution of psychotherapy to combined treatment, my estimate would be that that would be about the same. Um, in our paper in uh, World Psychiatry that came out, it says here in press, but it's now published in the February issue of uh, World Psychiatry, there were 11 studies which were very interesting uh, to, to my, in, in my idea. These studies, they had placebo only, psychotherapy only, pharmacotherapy only, and combined treatment. So they had all four components. So these allow us to look at what, what, what contributes each of these components to the effects of combined treatment. And if you look at these effect sizes, it seems as if the, the effects of psychotherapy and pharmacotherapy are relatively independent of each other. If you look at the effects of pharmacotherapy versus placebo, and the effects of psychotherapy versus placebo, that's about, if you sum them up, you see that the, the resulting effect size is about the effect size of combined treatment versus placebo. You have to, we have to be very careful with these kinds of outcomes because the confidence intervals are broad. And uh, it, they, these are mixed studies on depression and anxiety. But I think it's an interesting thought that uh, pharmacotherapy and psychotherapy may be independent, uh, have an independent effect uh, from each other. So then, then there's the issue, what we, what, we, what we mostly do in our database is that we look at the effects of uh, acute phase treatment. And we, we examine the effects after, directly after the treatment. But one issue is, of course, uh, well, what happens at the longer term. One of the problems there is that we do not have that much studies uh, with longer term effects, neither in pharmacotherapy nor in uh, psychotherapy. But there are a few studies, and we published a, a, a meta-analysis about that last year. If you, um, I think I made an error here in my slides. They're almost, they're identical here. So let me explain what, what happens uh, by, by words. Uh, if you, if you, um, if you look, so you have an acute phase treatment, and that's either CBT or pharmacotherapy. And then you look at what happens during the year after that acute phase treatment. And if you continue to prescribe antidepressive during the whole year, but you do nothing in the CBT group, so it's once and only CBT with no continuation phase, at one year follow-up, we found an odds ratio of 1.62 in favor of CBT. That was not significant. That was a trend, but it was not significant. However, this still indicates that the effects of CBT last longer than uh, the effects, than only the acute phase treatment. So if you give people psychotherapy, then they have more benefits over time. Well, if you look at the studies in which, well, if you look at, if you compare acute phase CBT with acute phase pharmacotherapy, and you taper the pharmacotherapy during, at uh, some point during that one year follow-up, and you give nothing to the CBT people, then the benefits of CBT are clearly uh, 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 better. So uh, there we found an odds ratio of 2.61, which, which was really significant. 
So the, these, this is only based on, um, I think, eight or nine studies. Again, we have to be very careful about this kind of outcomes, especially because these are naturalistic follow-ups. We do not actually know what people do during that year after the treatment. But it does suggest that psychotherapy does have longer-term effects uh, uh, which last beyond the acute phase. So, I come to my conclusions. 35 or 40 years out, uh, outcome research in psychotherapy, I think we've learned a lot. And I think meta-analysis have shown uh, quite clearly what psychotherapies do, how we overestimated the effects for a long time because of publication bias. We overestimated the effects because the quality of the studies wasn't very good. But we also know now, for example, that psychotherapies work also in older adults. And 30 years ago, nobody thought it would be possible to treat depression with psychotherapy in older adults. So I think we've learned quite a lot uh, during those uh, years. Um, but again, I think, uh, I think that it's psychotherapy for adult depression is very comparable with pharmacotherapy. We have overestimated the effects quite a lot uh, because of publication bias, because of low quality of studies. And we do have uh, significant effects of psychotherapy, which, is, which are comparable to those of uh, pharmacotherapy, uh, but they're not as big as we, as we thought for a long time. Okay. I think I, I finish here. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, Hello. Uh, thank you, Pim, for your very comprehensive and uh, interesting presentation. Are there any questions? Yes, please. Thank you. My name is Philippe van Oeyen from the Netherlands. Pim, thank you for the excellent presentation. And as we've been discussing some while ago, uh, there's always a question of the generalizability of the RCT data to clinical practice. And you show some quite impressive numbers uh, needed to treat. So, uh, once again, there's a question if your database also allows you to say something about, let's say, more the <coughs> clinical practice um, depressed patients. Uh, generalizing, uh, I think there are two things here. One thing is that in many randomized trials, uh, people, uh, patients are selected in order to, uh, inc to have the right inclusion criteria. And there have been some studies, I've been involved in them from Leiden, and they have looked whether, uh, we know from pharmacotherapy studies that uh, uh, psychotic patients are excluded, <coughs> people with suicidality. So if you, if you, if you take away all the uh, exclusion criteria, then there, you keep a group which may not be representative of clinical practice. That is less true in psychotherapy studies. So there, the, the patients we see in randomized trials are more comparable to what we see in routine practice. Uh, the other thing is that um, we make a difference between efficacy studies aimed at examining whether a treatment works and effectiveness studies. And most of the studies we have in our database are effectiveness studies done in routine practice which is enhanced by training therapists and by doing all kinds of things. Uh, but they, are, they do resemble clinical practice quite a lot. So I, I think it's, uh, we can generalize these things to, uh, uh, quite well to clinical practice. Thank you for the, uh, for the explanation. So that, that means that if you look at the numbers needed to treat, for instance, for combined therapy, it's around three. So that comes in the, in the same range as, for instance, ECT, which is often considered as a very effective therapy by, uh, by clinicians. So, just as a remark, but that's something to, uh, to ponder uh, on. Thank you. Yeah, you, you have to be fair, I, I think you have to be very careful to uh, use these data in clinical practice, because what you see in clinical practice is that many people uh, get better, but they also would have become better without the therapy. We, have, we just published a, 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 a paper 
in uh, the Journal of, of Affective Disorders, in which we looked at the exact percentage of people getting better through psychotherapy. And we, we saw that about 60% of people receiving uh, psychotherapy for depression did not meet diagnostic criteria for uh, major depression anymore. But if you looked at the control groups, which were uh, typically uh, care as usual, SIBO, about 45% didn't meet uh, uh, these criteria anymore. So if you, have, if you have 10 patients in clinical practice, six get better, but only one and a half gets better uh, because of the therapy. Well, you see that six uh, of, out of 10 people get better. So you have a very strong bias if you only look at your own patients. Thank you. I'm Dr. Chaudhary from India, and it's a comprehensive presentation itself. One thing, one of your slides shows, in terms of efficacy, tricyclic antidepressants, TCAs, are less efficacious than psychotherapy. Can you throw more light on this? Um, I think the, uh, we did find a difference between TCAs and uh, psychotherapies. Um, so there's no, that, that's what we found. But these, you have to be very careful with interpreting it. Personally, I think it's an artifact. Uh, I think it's an artifact of older studies uh, with TCAs. Uh, the, you, it's, you have a lot of interference with uh, uh, the design of the studies, which were not that good uh, with all the studies and the quality. Uh, and and if, you look, if you examine these kinds of things in meta-analysis, the outcomes are not very stable. So if you, if you add a few studies, then it's not significant anymore. And, and if you combine that with a finding that the difference between psychotherapies and TCAs is very small, then I, I, I think you shouldn't uh, uh, spend too much attention on it. Let me make a question first myself, one minute. Uh, Pim, uh, you said that in, in, uh, originally you found around 0, uh, 28 difference between uh, pharmacotherapy and psychotherapy, which vanished when you controlled for the dropout rate. Uh, While it was smaller, 0.07. And it was non-significant at, uh, at that level. And the, uh, the attrition rate was higher in the pharmacotherapy. Yes. How can this happen? Well, we thought... I, I, but, I, but I, logically, this cannot happen. Mm. To control for, for a dropout rate which is in favor of the less effect efficacious arm and you find both arms equal after controlling. This logically cannot happen. It can happen because you look at the individual studies. So the, the, uh, uh, a few studies can have a, quite an influence on the overall effects and they can point in different directions. Yeah. And you weigh the studies according to size. So that can happen. But I have to be very careful about this because, as I said, we didn't confirm this in our individual patient data meta analysis, the difference in dropout. So it may not be... In my uh, opinion, you induce a floor effect in both arms. Uh, I, cannot, I cannot oversee what you mean here. You suppress, think... you suppress in this way, you suppress the effect and then they come so close that they, you can use a floor effect. Don't you use LOC analysis in all this? Uh, well, you can use uh, LOCF analysis if you look at, at dichotomous outcomes, but not if you work with uh, continuous outcomes. So then you, if you work with, uh, with continuous outcomes and you use the last observation carried forward, you just improve, you just increase power uh, based on the same data. So that's not a correct method. But if you do it with uh, last observation carried forward, you can use the, random, the number of randomized people to look at it. Yeah. And so that's possible, in the, uh, but that's not possible in the continuous outcomes. So in the, in, the, in the analysis in which we adjusted for dropout rate, we looked at the last observation carried forwards in the dichotomous outcomes. And there we didn't find any difference. 
But again, you have to remember that the difference we, we found between psychotherapy and pharmacotherapy. Right. On, on your database, you have 362 studies collected. You refer to psychotherapies, but there are many methods. Could you please brief us on the results you presented? What are the leading psychotherapy methods studied? What are the mainstreams? And what was the usual length of, of those courses you refer to all comparisons, Dr. Ramsan from Latvia? Well, the, the, the most important psychotherapies which are evidence-based are CBT, uh, interpersonal psychotherapy, and behavioral activation. And that there is also evidence for, uh, some evidence for uh, problem solving. Uh, but there are several other types of psychotherapies like uh, psychodynamic treatments or social skills training. And there is quite some uh, research showing that it doesn't really, that the difference between those types of psychotherapies, uh, uh, that, that they are equally effective. So there are no differences between them. But, but anyway, what is the percentage when you refer to studies, psychotherapies, a bulk is what, CBP 70, 80%, 50%? I don't know it by heart, uh, but I, I would say 60% uh, uh, on CBT, 10% on IPT, 10% on behavioral activation, okay. things like that. Most of is on CBT. Okay, I think I think it's time to close the session. Thank you very much, Pim, for your presentation. Thank, Thank you, you all for being here this early in the morning yes. to join us.